Okay, so next up in the mini quad build is the actual configuration of the multi Wii controller. I have everything wired up and you know, going to the standard channels aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder to the corresponding ports on the board, and then we have our motor connectors. As I pointed out before, this is the X-Rock Multi-Wii, and I've been using the Flip 1.5 Multi-Wii uh, documentation to get this guy set up. So let's go ahead and get our Multi-Wii connected. Now we'll go ahead and do the firmware configuration and load. I'm using version 2.0 of the Multi-Wii firmware, mainly because that's uh, the firmware that I know is compatible with this X-Rock Multi-Wii board. So uh, we'll go over to config.h, walk through, we got the Quad X configuration, and then we're using uh, this IMU, and that's really it. We're gonna leave all the defaults uh, in place and go ahead and let's just select the proper board which is this Arduino Pro 5 volt 16 megahertz at mega 328 so let's go ahead and compile and upload that to our board we want to use the USB okay now our firmware is loaded on the multi Wii board and let's go ahead and launch the GUI to do the uh, calibration. If you're not familiar with the multi-Wii download, as part of it you get the firmware in one folder and in the other folder you'll have the uh, configuration tool which is this Java based GUI. So I'm going to go ahead and select my serial USB port and I'm going to click start and so you should see uh, your, your graph for your accelerometer. Now you'll notice that if I move the quad around, see all sorts of data and orientation going on and make sure that you have everything level and I'm going to go ahead and click calibrate accelerometer and that is done and we can just go ahead and read the default settings from the board. We're going to go ahead and accept those. So now I've gone ahead and connected my battery to uh, my mini quad just so that I could have the receiver on and you'll notice if I give a little throttle up on my transmitter you'll see uh, the value go up there and then if I yaw see those go up and down then I'm going to pitch and roll so you want your yaw pitch and roll at about 1500 right midway and then your throttle anywhere start at about a thousand and up to two thousand and so everything looks good there so we're ready to take it for a test flight before i arm the motors i'm going to go ahead and do a quick just uh, bench calibration so we'll start with a gyro which is down with a pitch and then down and left with the throttle see kind of the blinking led and then let's go uh, do the accelerometer which is down and then up and to the left you see the blinking LED. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and bring the throttle back down. And then let's just real quick make sure we do a prop rotation test to make sure that everything is spinning in the right direction. So I'm going to go ahead and arm it with a down and right. And then just give it a little throttle. Just like everything, except that. like this guy doesn't want to. Okay, it looks like all our props are spinning in the right direction. So I'm going to put it on the ground and see if we can get a little hover. So let me arm and let's just do a little hover. I'm armed. Now that's kind of weird that I only got the rear two props going, but I'll give it some throttle. About 50%. 100 percent but Jeez, that's really not behaving like you would expect it to. It's like none of the motors have gotten or getting full throttle. Currently the, the all up weight of this guy with the battery is 180 grams. So I would expect there to be enough 
power or thrust to get it off the ground. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is disconnect this and I'm gonna run one of the motors directly to the throttle on the receiver and let's just see if the amount of thrust varies when I go direct and give it full throttle versus when I'm going through the multi-wee board. I'll go ahead and give him some throttle. Oh yeah, that's definitely a lot more throttle going direct than through the multi-wee. I'm not really sure what's going on at the moment, but I'm gonna do one more test. I'm gonna put the uh, 3S LiPo, uh, connect that up and see if it might be a power issue. Okay, before I hook the 3S up to the multi-wee, I wanna just do a quick comparison test straight through without the flight controller between the 2S and the 3S, just so we can kinda hear the difference in the spin-up speed. So this is the 2S. Okay, let's go ahead and put the 3S on there. Okay, definitely a big difference between the two, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook the motor back up to the board and hook up the 3S and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're back with the 3S hooked up and let me just point out that I uh, have weighed the all-up weight of the quad now is 230 grams so that 3S battery is about 50 grams more than the 2S. Previously we were at, we were at 180 and now we're at 230. So let's arm and see what happens. Okay so something's definitely going on with the this multi-wee board. You can see this right front prop isn't getting any power and the other three definitely are not running at full throttle and I do have uh, my transmitter all the way open so and what I'm going to try next just to see to rule out any issues with that board is I have my APM 2.5 disconnected from my Arducopter and I'm going to put it on here next and we're going to give that a try. I really thought this was going to get up in the air today for a nice hover test, but I appreciate you guys following along and I'll have an update with the APM soon. And until then, post any comments, suggestions below, and thank you for watching.